a groundbreaking presentation by BBC Africa into the world of the famous televangelical preacher. Is he a real prophet of God? You decide. Everyone here in the stadium, everywhere here, say Jesus! Son of the Jesus! He wanted to be the biggest, best, the most important pastor in the world. This is the moment we have been waiting for. Prophet TV Joshua has arrived here. A man who has got a list of presidents in his pocket. He was a world famous Nigerian televangelist faith healer, and Pentecostal pastor who established the Synagogue Church of All Nations. Three years after his passing, a BBC documentary was made. Jesus performs healing. TB Joshua performs healing. Jesus feeds the multitude. TB Joshua performs massive generosity programs. Jesus has many followers. TB Joshua has followers. He has his own program called Emmanuel TV with 50,000 viewers back then, proclaiming that he is the second in command with God, and all his miracles are televised here. People flocking from every corners of the world to get a glimpse of him and receive total healing. Some insist it's nothing but lies. Others are confused as to why these people didn't speak up before his passing. Then there are those aggressively defending the man of God who did great things. Similarly, others are cautioning against speaking against the Lord's anointed. Synagogue Church is a complicated system. We'll clear everything in your head. We'll make you believe that all the knowledge you had before was rubbish. We don't need it to live. All what you needed to live is to be like T.B. Joshua. We shall talk about faith. What is the power of faith? He would just speak for hours. One of my main jobs was writing down everything he said. This is almost like the Bible. It's the words that God has spoken to T.B. Joshua. You have put your faith in God's words. You are constantly thinking, of the quotes of T.B. Joshua. You are encouraged to memorize them, to chant them. You are to embody those words, be the words, live the words. Whatever he said had to come from God and therefore had to be true. The closer you are to T.B. Joshua, the closer you are to the kingdom of God. An online article says, miracles can mislead. Jesus warned us about false teachers who would perform many miracles, Matthew 24, verse 24. Countless people coming in search of the miraculous. People want to be healed. They want to be liberated from whatever ails them. Many saw T.B. Joshua as the man who could do that. And because miracles seem to be happening, surely God was with him, they say. But that's not what Jesus says, the article says. In fact, he warns against treating miracles as a sure sign of God's hand. John chapter 6, verse 2, And a large crowd was following him, because they saw the signs that he was doing on the sick. Is he a real prophet of God? Prophet or fraud? Let me know in the comment section. Joseph Smith is perhaps best known for his translation of the Book of Mormon, another testament of Jesus Christ. Church members believe that this was led to a hill near Palmyra, New York, where he received an ancient record from an angel known as Moroni. The record engraved on gold plates gave the history of a people who lived on America continent during the time of Christ. Joseph translated the plates in about three months, and the Book of Mormon was first published in New York in 1800s. He has now 16 million members. Is Muhammad a true prophet of God? And is the Quran an inspired holy book? Number 1. Noah and Methuselah, the 120-year prophecy. God sends a prophet by the name of Noah and 120 years is allotted to man. And in Genesis chapter 5 verse 25, a person by the name of Methuselah, 
His name means, when He dies, it shall come. Methuselah died at 969 years old. Then the flood came. He was like a walking prophecy. So the initiator prophet was Noah. And the fulfillment sign, Methuselah's death, fulfilling the 120-year prophecy. Number two, next is Abraham and Moses. Genesis 15 verse 13, the 400-year prophecy. We see here that God gives Abraham a prophecy and he tells them 400 years, Israel will be held captive. Does someone come at the end of that 400 years to verify the 400-year prophecy? The answer is yes. It is Moses. Exodus 2 verse 10 says, Moses comes to deliver the children of Israel out of captivity. So the initiator prophet is Abraham. The fulfillment sign, Moses. The 400-year prophecy fulfilled and verified. Number 3, Moses, Jeremiah, and Daniel. Jeremiah 25 verse 11, This whole land shall become a ruin and a waste, and this nation shall serve the king of Babylon 70 years. Jeremiah is referring to Babylon, gaining dominion over the territories including Jerusalem. Jeremiah along with the other prophets are verifying what Moses is talking about. The prophecy of Jeremiah, the initiator prophet, and this was fulfilled at the time of Daniel. Number four, Daniel to John the Baptist, the 490-year prophecy. The 490-year prophecy of Daniel starts at 457 BC. Then 27 AD, the baptism of Jesus. There were also women prophets like the prophet Holda, prophet Deborah, and prophetess Anna. Prophetess Anna, one of the first people who recognized in faith the baby Jesus as God's promised Messiah, the first coming of Jesus. John the Baptist was preaching about repentance and the love of God, Jesus to come, mathematically verified prophets, and then on 31 AD, the crucifixion of Jesus. God's mathematical chain, time signatures, disqualified prophets, presenting a different gospel, and introducing another books such as the Quran and the Book of Mormon. Jesus dies three and a half years later in the middle of the week, 31 AD. Then 50 days later, the Holy Spirit is poured out and it's poured out on the disciples. The same Holy Spirit who was guiding Noah leads Peter, James, Matthew, and all the other Bible writers. They are connected to God's mathematical timeline. We can trust their books of divine origin because they fit the time stamp. The stoning of Stephen in 34 AD. When Stephen is stoned, there's a man by the name of Saul. In the very next chapter, Saul runs into Jesus. He is thrown off of his horse. He goes blind for three days. And those three days are over, he has changed from Saul to Paul. And he becomes the author of the rest of the New Testament, the Ephesians of Paul. We can trust Paul and his books that he wrote. Because he came at the final part of the 70-week prophecy. He fulfills divine mathematics. Paul was converted, you'll see, in 34 AD. So the question is, why isn't there a line connected to Muhammad or Joseph Smith or Apollo Kiboloi and all the other false prophets? It is because they are not of God. Would you like to really surrender to the real miracle worker, Jesus today? Kindly type in the comment section, I only follow Jesus Christ. Thank you, dear friends. May this video help in your relationship with God. And may we continue to preach the truth found in Bible prophecy.